everybody. Today we are going to make a version of Snake. I'm sure all of you have played some version of Snake. Um, this is going to be the version that we are going to be making today during this tutorial. So let's uh, head over to Scratch. Let's click Create and let's get started. First thing is first. Sprite number one, the cat. Time to get rid of the cat. See a cat. And what we're going to do now is we are going to make our snake. So hover over, choose a sprite, and we are going to paint the snake. Snakes, they're green. Let's get a green snake here, garden snake, I don't know, whatever color you want. I'm going to make a box for the body, and I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and then I'm going to draw my snake's body. From there, instead of having an outline, I'm going to choose no outline. And then, oops, and then I am going to move my snake into the middle. So that snaps into the middle. For sprite one, I'm going to rename this to snake. And then I'm going to duplicate this by right clicking or two finger clicking on a Chromebook. And I'm going to name this one food, and I'm going to change the color. So the snake is going to go after a different color. So I'm going to change the color, hit the fill button, and there it is. So now I've got on my stage, I've got a snake, and I have got the and I've got the food. So that's what we're going to do there. Click on our snake, and it's time to code our snake. Well, when we code our snake, we'll play this on green flag. So we'll head over to events and we'll choose when green flag is clicked. I want my snake to always appear in the middle. And I'll tell you why maybe towards the end. If you don't already know, you'll figure it out. So I want it to be at zero, zero. And forever, I want it to do a couple of things. So under control, we'll take our forever loop. And I want to set my rotation style so that it doesn't rotate. That is a motion under set rotation style left to right. I don't want it to rotate at all. And I want it to move kind of slow. 10 is going to be too fast. Let's try two. Maybe that'll be good. Now we want it to interact with our arrow keys. So we're going to have four if then statements. Control. If then, if then, if then, and if then. So this is going to be up, down, left, and right. Now these are all sensing. So for sensing, if key is pressed, if key is pressed, if key is pressed, and if key is pressed, we want up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. So if we're pushing any of these keys, if we're pressing any of these keys, we want the snake to move in that direction. So that is going to be motion, and it's going to be point in direction of 90. So slide that into each one, but they're not all going to be 90. So for up arrow, point in direction 90. If you click on 90, we have this little compass that opens up the circle. We want it to point direction zero. That's straight up. Now we have down. So we take our arrow, point straight down. That is going to be 180. To the left, take our arrow all the way to negative 90. And to the right, if we click on 90, it's already set to the right. So it's 90. So let's see what happens. So we have our snake moving up, down, left, and right. Perfect. So now if we hit the food, nothing happens because we haven't programmed it to actually do anything just yet. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to head over to our food item and we're going to make a couple of variables since we're here. We are going to make a count variable is the first thing that we're going to do, and a clone variable. 
So I like to delete this variable here and we'll make two new ones. One we will call count and then we'll make another one. And that's actually gonna be a clone. So we'll make that one too. So for our food, now that we have our food here, we're going to start it the same way. It's going to be an event on green flag. We're going to set our count to zero. So this one now is said, it says clone. We want it to set count to zero. And I want this to go to a random position. So we are going to find a random position. It's going to go someplace random on the screen and we'll throw on a forever loop it's going to be sensing for the snake. So it's forever, we're gonna throw in an if then statement. And it's going to be sensing, uh, not the mouse pointer, but our snake that we made. And if that's the case, we're going to go to another random position on the screen and we are going to change our count. So how many times we've eaten the food, we're gonna change our count by one. So let's see what happens here. So I'm playing the game and we can see that my count is increasing by one. I also have clone showing up on here. Since I have my variables open, I'm going to unclick cone so that all I see is the count. All right, so we've eaten the food, but our snake is not getting any bigger. So that's not really fun, right? We want to make that snake uh, grow as it eats. So we're going to click on our snake sprite. And same thing, when we click our green flag, forever we want to be creating a clone of ourself. So forever we want to create a clone of myself. That's all done under the control code. When I start the clone, I want to wait until my count increases. As my count increases, my body will increase as well. So that's a variable. We'll throw over count there. And then we want to delete what is behind us. So in terms of the clone, we want to we, we just we want to increase our body the same amount that we eat, right? So you don't want to always keep increasing for every one food item that you eat. One food item equals one increase. If we don't delete this clone, we are going to be um, nonstop getting bigger. And we definitely don't want that. So under control, we want to delete this clone. So now let's see what happens. So my count gets reset to zero. And you can see my snake is now getting bigger. It's increasing, okay? But now what happens if I hit the edge? Nothing seems to happen, right? And that's not the point of the game. We want our snake to interact with what's happening along the edges. So we're going to throw that inside this string right here, we're gonna throw in another if then statement. This time, if it senses that it has touched the edge, then we want, under looks, we want it to say, I don't know, game over for two seconds, and we want to stop all of our sprites. Let's see if this works. Okay, so my count is at zero. I'm going up. My snake increases in length. Again, increasing in length and I hit the side and it says game over and my game stops. That is a really simple version of snake. From here you can do and add all types of different elements. You can add music, you can add some sound effects, you can add a backdrop, you can do pretty much anything you want to make this a much more uh, in-depth, fun game. But this is just the basic version. So 
hopefully you enjoyed creating it. Um, and stick around and we'll continue making more games soon. <laughs>